This is proof that on day to day, Londoners need to cheer up, right? I was at Euston Station waiting for a train back up north. It was packed, packed concourse, roasting up day, middle of the heat wave, everyone's dressed wrong and miserable. And it was just getting busier and busier and trains were getting cancelled left, right and centre. And then out of nowhere, this businessman did a massive sneeze. You've never heard anything like it. Because it sounded exactly like a fart, right? <laughs> I know. And yet nobody around him laughed. <laughs> and I thought, what is wrong with this town? <laughs> what a horrendous place to live where farts aren't funny. Can you imagine? <laughs> imagine. But let's be honest, if that was in Manchester, we'd have made him the mayor. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> He'd have definitely made Granada reports, you know what I mean? He'd be turning the Christmas lights on, that bastard. <laughs> it was a proper, like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Like, it was horrible. I was the over, proper laughing. Nothing from anyone. I thought, weird, you're weird, you lot. And I'm glad you giggled at that, right? That's all it needed, a little giggle, you know. I told it in Lancaster for the first time it happened, on the day it happened. I didn't even get a giggle. They just stared at me. And I thought, that was really weird. Well, I, that very rarely happens these days. Like, so I'm, I'm driving home, and I've got the CD, like, I've, I've recorded it. And I'm driving home, listening back to it. And I get to that joke, and my toes are curling. I thought, oh, here's that joke that dies on its ass. And as soon as I started telling it, I realised why, why it didn't work. It's because I got my words mixed up. I don't know if it was the heat or the lights or the nerves. But I told that crowd in Lancaster that I heard a man at Euston Station do a fart. <laughs> That sounded exactly like a sneeze. <laughs> and quite rightly, they all went, well, that never fucking happened, right? And I thought, he's making this shit up. I thought, yes, fair enough, sometimes I am. But it's actually bloody happened. And if anything, that made-up scenario is even better than what really happened. <laughs> if you had a mate who every so often went, hey, Jay, 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 Jay. At you, you are... <laughs> Let's get on for it, let's get our talent, Dave. Let's do it. I called this show, I called it First World Problems. You'll have seen that phrase, that title, uh, knocking about online for a couple of years now. The term First World Problems really sums it up because for the people who don't know, it's those problems that if you ever met someone from the third world and heard their proper problems, you'd be pretty embarrassed about it. You know what I mean? Their, their, their problems are things like staying alive, sanitation, where to get water and food from, and we're giving it, why do hot dogs come in eight but the buns come in fucking six? Like, you know, like... <laughs> it's embarrassing, isn't it, when you think about it? My brother was eating his dinner once, he looked dead disappointed. I said, what's up with you? He said, oh, I was just saving the best bit of my dinner till the end, and now I'm too full to eat it. <laughs> You're too full? That's a problem in this country! <laughs> Unbelievable.